Let's move on using an example where we will create a new GPX project, add our assets, and compare multiple simulations using different assets and settings. In this tutorial, we will go through the steps listed on the left using the data and setup given in the tables on the right. First, we will create a new project. We will then add our assets to this project, starting with the compound, using the properties in this first table on the right. Next, we will add our formulation and use this in two different doses. We will then add a physiology asset, create a population estimates for age-related, or PAIR, physiology for our PVPK model, and assign intrinsic clearance to the liver. After combining these assets into different simulations, using the settings on the bottom right table, we will run all simulations simultaneously and compare the results. We will refer back to these tables throughout the tutorial. When we open GPX, this is what we will see, the dashboard. On the left, we have the navigation panel, which is how we can move between the different views in the interface. We can see there's a view for each type of asset and for running simulations and analyzing the results. These views are currently grayed out because we have not yet created a project. To create our new project, we simply click on the new button under create. We can now enter a project name, calling it my first project. And then select a location to save the project. I will use my documents folder. From here, we click on the create button and we now have our new project. Now that we have that project, we can add our first asset, a compound. To do this, we navigate to the compounds view. To create our first compound asset, we simply click add and give it a name. Let's call it compound X. Just like that, we have created our first asset. We can now view and edit the properties of our compound using the panels below. Molecular properties is where we can see the structure, if present, and edit the molecular weight and related properties. Currently, all values are the default for a new compound. Moving to the solubility panel, we can edit the reference solubility of our compound. Referring back to the table, we note that compound X has a reference solubility of 1 mg per mil at pH 10. We will edit the table to reflect this pH. Biorelevant solubilities contain information on solubility in media like BESIF and FASIF. We will not edit these properties in the current tutorial. Moving down to the disassociation constant, or pKa, section, we can add the basic pKa of 8 for our compound. We will also change the solubility factor to 20. We now see our pH solubility profile displayed in the plot on the right. Continuing to move down the compounds view, we come to the distribution coefficient section where we can edit log D or log P. We can also view the log D versus pH profile on the right. In this example, we will leave log P at the default value of one. Next, we reach the permeability panel. We will keep the human PEF value of 1 times 10 to the minus 4 centimeters per second, but we will also add the absorption system's CACO2 P apparent value from the compound information table. To do so, we click Add. This adds a new row to the table. Clicking on the source, we can change it to ABS CACO2. We then set the value to 1 times 10 to the minus 5 
centimeters per second. The last two panels are where we would enter information for enzymes and transporters if we have kinetic information for a compound. We do not have that information for compound X. Using the navigation panel to move to our next asset, we can click on dosing, where we will add a formulation and dose schedule. First, let's add a formulation. Similar to adding a compound, we simply click the Add button to create a new formulation asset and give it a name. In this case, Oral IR Tablet. We see that the default formulation type is indeed an immediate release oral tablet, so we do not need to make any changes. However, if we want to set up a different type of formulation, such as an IV bolus or oral solution, this is where we would make that selection. If desired, particle size and controlled release information can be edited in the respective panels below. Now that we have a formulation, we can use it to create a dosing schedule. Once again, we must click Add to create our asset. In this example, we will create a 10 mg and a 20 mg dose. Let's start with the 10 mg dose, calling it 10 mg IR tab PO times 1. Our dosing schedule starts with one dose administered, 100 mg by default. Because we only have one formulation, it is also selected by default. If we wanted to use a different formulation, we would change it using this drop down. We can edit the dose strength to be 10 mg. Because we are only using a single administration of 10 mg, we do not need to make further edits to this dose schedule. Now, let's create our second dose, 20 mg. While we could add another dosing schedule, let's demonstrate the option to create copies of existing assets by clicking the Copy button. This will create a copy of our 10 mg dose and give us the option to select a new name. In this case, 20 mg IR tab PO times 1. All we need to do now is change the dose strength to 20 milligrams. We have now finished creating both of our dosing schedules. Next, we will need a physiology to whom the 10 and 20 milligram oral tablets of compound X will be dosed. To do this, we will navigate to the physiology's view. Let's add our physiology and call it 30 year, 80 kilogram human, reflecting the characteristics that we will put in. We now see the physiology asset has been created and has the default demographic information. It is important to note that in GPX, assets are created and named before they are edited, so it is important to choose an instructive name for your assets. However, we can always rename the assets later if we need to. In this example, we will change the subject's body weight to 80 kilograms. Because we will be working with a PVPK model, we also need to create a pair physiology, which we can do by opening the next panel and clicking Create Pair Physiology. This will create the whole body physiology based on the demographic information above. Moving down further, we can review information on the gastrointestinal physiology for oral drug absorption. This panel includes gut physiologic properties such as fluid volumes and feeding status. The diagram below contains more detailed gut section information, which is also summarized in the ACAT table at the bottom. We will use default parameters in this tutorial. Now that we have both a compound and a physiology, it is time to update the pharmacokinetics of our PBPK model. To do so, we navigate to the pharmacokinetics view.
The first thing to note is at the top of the pharmacokinetics view, we have drop down menus to make selections for both compounds and physiologies. This is because, as we mentioned before, pharmacokinetic properties are specific to a compound physiology pair. Below these selectors, at the top of the PK view, we have general pharmacokinetic properties like blood to plasma concentration ratio and FUP. We also have a panel for our compartmental parameters and then our PVPK model in the panel below that. In GPX, compartmental and PVPK models can exist side by side, although only one model can be simulated at a time. In this tutorial, we are using a PVPK model, so we can scroll down to view the pharmacokinetic properties. We first see we have our traditional PVPK diagram and can view and edit the properties of a selected tissue on the right. We can select the liver and add our intrinsic clearance of 10 liters per hour. Scrolling down further, we can see the summary table as well as options for calculating KP values. Note that the clearance added above is present in this table. A summary of volume of distribution, clearance, and half-life is given below the table. The last asset type to review is the physiology schedule. Physiology schedules control changes in physiology over time such as alternating between fasted and fed states. We can see that a single physiology schedule has already been created automatically for the physiology asset that we added. This is what we will use in our simulations. Before we move on to creating our simulations, this is a good point to remember to save our project using the save button in the top corner of the interface. We will now proceed to creating and then running our simulations. Just like our other assets, we will click Add to create our first simulation. Let's call it Compound X 10 mg PO. We can then expand the Drug Administration panel to select the assets that will be used in our simulation the compound, the dose schedule, and the physiology schedule. We will also need to change the pharmacokinetic model to PVPK. For those of you who are familiar with previous versions of GastroPlus, it is worth noting that in GPX, a simulation is the closest thing to a drug record in that it brings together a compound, formulation, dose, physiology, and pharmacokinetic model. Now, let's create another simulation using the 20 milligram dose. As with other assets, we can create a copy of that simulation and then give it a name that reflects the 20 milligram dose. We then simply select the corresponding dose schedule as our other assets will remain the same in this simulation. Now that we have selected our assets for the simulation, let us take a look at the simulation settings, which will control how these assets are used. We can expand the compound settings panel and scroll down to see various settings, starting with general settings such as metabolism, transport, and EHC. These are followed by more specific settings, covering solubilization, dissolution, precipitation, permeability, and more. In this tutorial, we will take a closer look at permeability. When we set up the compound, we added permeability measurements from two sources, a human PEF and an in vitro CACO2 PF. Both of those constitute properties of the compound, representing measurements from two separate assays. While both of those are unique properties, we can only use one as the basis for permeability in a single simulation. If we want to compare the effect of two different inputs on our simulation results, all we need to do is create a new simulation and edit the simulation settings to use the other permeability. 
To do so, let's create a copy of this simulation, appending CACO2 PAP to the name. Now, just change the effective permeability source to ABS CACO2. We will see that GPX automatically converts the in vitro measurement to an in vivo input using one of the built-in correlations. For completeness, let's do the same for the 10 milligram dose. Selecting that simulation from the dropdown, creating a copy with a similar name, and changing the permeability source in the settings below. With our four simulations created, we now want to run them and compare the results. Single simulations can be run quickly using the Run Simulation button here at the top, but in this example, we want to run them all simultaneously. In order to do that, we need to create a run, which we will do on the Runs view. To create a run, just click the Add drop down here and select Simulations. This will create a run where we can select multiple simulations to be run all at once. Let's call it Run All. Now, all we need to do is select our four simulations. Once the simulations are selected, we click Start. The program will run the four simulations simultaneously, and when they are complete, take us here to the analysis view where we can review and analyze our results. By default, we will land on key view, where we can quickly see preloaded key plots, such as CP time profiles. Other key views, such as absorption and dissolution curves and regional absorption are available at the top. Since we ran four simulations with different doses and different permeabilities, we see that there are four distinct CP time profiles, as expected. The plot legend can be opened by clicking this button on the top right of the plot, and additional options are available using the button below that. For a more detailed look at results, we can use Deep View. Deep View allows you to look at granular simulation results in specific locations within the body, for different processes, for one or more compounds in the selected simulations. We won't be diving deeper into Deep View in this tutorial but encourage you to explore it more using this or another example. Lastly, to view a summary of the simulation results, we can switch to the summary view. Here, we have a table giving us parameters like Cmax, Tmax, AUC, and more. With that, we will conclude this introductory tutorial. Thank you for your time and attention and we hope you enjoy using GPX.